That brings us to our last three functional groups. The first two contain nitrogen. First one is called an amine group, which is a nitrogen. Now, the nitrogen can either be primary, secondary, or tertiary. But for the purposes of what we're going to do here, we're going to make it primary. The amine group will be NH2, and it will always be on the end carbon for what we're going to do here. They're used in dyes and medications. To name it, you just put the prefix for the number of carbons, an amine. What's that? An amine. Methanamine would be one carbon with an amine group and fill it up with the rest of the hydrogens. CH3, NH2. Methanamine. Butanamine would be four carbons. Amine group at the end. And hydrogens all around. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2. Yes, I see H2 already. Stop asking me. NH2. Amides are like amines, except they add a double bonded oxygen. C-O-N-H-2. Now for this class, we're going to assume that this is on the first carbon, the primary carbon. It's used for making rubber and plastics, and to name it, the number of carbons followed by an amide. So ethanamide, amide group, Finish them up with the hydrogens. F anamide. CH3, CONH2. Chicon! Pent anamide. Pent, one, two, three, four, five carbons. CONH2 on the end. Filling them up with hydrogens. CH3, CH2. CH2, CH2, it's right over there, CONH2. And that is how you do formulas for amides. The final family we're going to do in here are ethers. Ethers contain an oxygen with carbons on ether side. <laughs> it, uh, I'm sorry. It's a single oxygen between two alkyl groups. It's used for anesthetics, although it's not used on humans anymore. They used to use this stuff on humans to knock you out. Yeah, if you're cur poor Curious George is about to get uh, knocked out. The thing about ether was, yeah, it would put you to sleep really great, but you might not wake up. And why might you want to use it? Well, you see, back in the day, you know, they could perform surgeries on you, which involved cutting you open and playing around with your guts and stuff. Um, and, of course, this would be very uh, distracting to the doctors if the patients weren't anesthetized because they'd be totally awake while they're slicing into them and playing with their guts and screaming and thrashing about. And this just makes life difficult for the poor surgeon. So what they do is they knock out the patient so there's no screaming and thrashing about. Oh, yeah, and so that the patient isn't traumatized by the incredible pain, doesn't pat, you know, it's this whole thing. They used to use ether, but they don't use ether anymore, unless you're trying to knock out fruit flies for a genetics experiment. Now, the way to name an ether is you name it for the number of carbons in the first chain with a YL, prefix for the number of carbons in the second chain, YL, ether. So if there's one carbon here, two carbons here, methyl, ethyl, ether. You name it for what's on ether side of the oxygen. If it happens in the spring, you can say hello to the ether bunny. Yay! Dimethyl ether. Dimethyl ether. Di, di, di. Has an oxygen in the middle and a methyl or a single carbon on ether side. CH3. Oh, CH3. Dimethyl ether. Diethyl ether, oh, look at that. Got his nose in it. Diethyl ether has an oxygen with an ethyl group or two carbon chain on ether side. CH3, CH2, 
O, CH2, CH3. And there's your ether. Diethyl ether is the ether that was used as knockout gas. Finally, ethyl butyl ether. We have an oxygen in the middle, we have an ethyl or two carbon chain on this side, and a butyl or a four carbon chain on this side. Ethyl butyl ether. CH3, CH2, O, CH2, 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 and CH3. An oxygen in the middle with carbon chains on either side. Now what about amino acids? You know, the building blocks of proteins and DNA and everything that's alive. Well, an amino acid contains an amine end and an organic acid end, which is why it's called an amino acid. And whatever the stuff in between those two groups are determines what the amino acid is. There's all kinds of amino acids. Here's the NH2 and here's the COO on this side. NH2, COO, NH2, COO, NH2, COO. I want you to notice that this is identical in all the amino acids. What's different about each of these amino acids is the other stuff. The other stuff that's attached to it determines what the identity of the amino acid is. They're called side chains. Now that goes beyond the scope of this course, but I wanted to show you what amino acids were.